So let me uh, give you some uninformed, random, and naive thoughts on this issue, which are more or like less based on about eight to ten hours thinking yesterday and the day before. But let me uh, let me take a position of a skeptical antitrust economist. Like ten years ago, in one of these conferences, it was called the extremist of antitrust by Klaus Dieter Edelman because I proposed to give rewards in leniency programs and to not to use them uh, for uh, firms that will actually report. Now, I'm, after 10 years and some experience in procurement agency, I tend to be a bit skeptical of the way antitrust uh, think at the markets because there's very s strong focus on competition. But competition is a tool to get outcomes, so it's not always good. It's one tool, it's very good sometimes, it's very bad in other times, so contracts are instruments to eliminate competition. And we use contracts because sometimes competition is very bad. So let's keep in mind that competition is not an objective, it's a tool, okay? So let's go on this premise. Let me go to, well, let's see, the first point. So I, I'm, this slide is, I, I'm looking at this issue from the consumer's perspective. I'm a high, strong consumer of so this, uh, uh, price search mechanism. I don't delegate my trips uh, to any secretary. I do it myself. I want to look at the prices, hotels, flights, and everything. So a big issue of this debate is the, the price comparison function, right? So the, for example, the, the, the UK case was on price comparison websites, okay? Then they also let you buy insurance, motor insurance, but essentially, it was, the essential function was price comparison, okay? For the whole hotel booking cases, of course, this platform does do more than allow you to compare price. You can look at location, you can look at uh, uh, the different classes of the hotels, features, uh, availability, which is important, and also price, okay? And then you can book. So as long as the price component is important, okay, if you go to this, in these platforms to search for the good price. You want this price to make sense. So the price they actually compare should be the lowest price. Otherwise, you're not, you're losing your time, okay? So in some sense, these PPAs are an intrinsic part of the value of the service that this price comparison website are offering. If I go to a price comparison, website and I don't know whether this price makes any sense because another price comparison website has other prices from the same companies. Then you go on their page and you have another price and then I call and they give another price. These platforms don't offer any service anymore, okay? So I think this perspective that PPAs may be a fundamental part of the value of the service offered by the platform seems not to be discussed in this debate, okay? And I think it's crucial, at least for me as a consumer, this is crucial. If I use one, I would like to have one place where to go and book my, my hotels. And when I look at prices of that uh, uh, platforms, I would like to be sure that the price I see there are the lowest price on the market. Okay? So I think this is something we should take into account when we discuss this issue. So that was my one thought. Let's talk about NAPAS. <laughs> Uh, so, well, yes, you know, of course, uh, if, suppose, you know, if suppose this platform invests into a nice matching service, a lot of pictures on the hotels, uh, feedback system, price comparison, and so on and so forth. Of course, it's immediate. I mean, I still do it. You know, I go to booking and look for the hotel. Maybe there is some availability and some prices. Then I go immediately to check on the hotel homepage. I do it all the time. And usually the price is similar. Now I know, I learned that if I call, it might actually not be similar anymore. Okay, so now I will call, okay? So this goes to, so to the question is, what is this narrow thing doing after all, no? Uh, so how, how does free riding take place, no? Free riding takes place in many ways, okay? So, does this NAPA protect in any way? Uh, does it, does, do we need protection? And if we need protection, does it do it? 
I'm a little bit skeptical if instead of you know going on the home page I would I call then we have solved any protection problem. And I'm skeptical, so it's not clear that this NAPA is achieving much. And, and Paolo said it's not even clear that something should be achieved. But if you want to protect some investment, it's not obvious that this NAPA, this NAPA thinks he's doing it. Uh, so one, one example, you know, uh, the NAPA says, if you, you cannot reduce price on your homepage as an author, but you can reduce price on other platforms. But then, you know, if there's a, your daughter that puts a nice homepage on Google site for free, that puts the name of two hotels, you, know, you call, you know, instead of having the, the homepage of hotel A, you call it the homepage of hotel A and B, then they can reduce price, okay? Because it's a platform and not a narrow thing. So, not clear that this is doing, you know, what we want. It's not clear that this the what we want is protect the investment, but it's also not clear that the narrow thing is protecting the investment at all, given you can uh, undo the effect in a simple way. And so if we want to go for this, we think that this narrow thing should be, is, is the solution, we should define much more carefully what platform means and what narrow means, you know? because otherwise it would be very, well, we're pushing people to create two, two hotel platforms, which is not really something efficient in my view. So more generally, okay, people, some concerns were like, well, you know, we, the promise of internet was uh, to have fewer intermediation costs, okay? And now it seems that we're paying a lot of fees to booking and other intermediaries, which seems to be on the other way around. Well, I would be careful to this, with this argument, because it's not that these platforms are intermediary. I mean, if the function is price comparison, that's a different function, yeah? So a sales channel does not, Price comparison is trying to sell one product with one price, okay? And um, a platform allows us to compare and to choose in a way that uh, standard channels did not allow. Think about how we booked a hotel before. We go to an agency, and then you have to pay all the personnel of this agency. This agency had long-term contracts with a bunch of hotels, three, four for each town, and then the option was they would come back with two options to us, okay? Now we go on booking and we find like 25 options, 50 and so on. So there is an issue, in my view of excess intermediation, there is an issue of centralization versus intermediation. If you think about, you can make it a parallel to with e-procurement, okay? I've been working in an e-procurement uh, agency in Italy. Of course, you want one e-procurement platform, not five. If, if you want price transparency, and if you believe that transparency in competition is good, you want one place, okay, not more. If you ask firms that are transcend, they are building e-procurement platforms, firms that work in you know, all over the continents in many different product lines, they always centralize and have one procurement conference, okay? So having competitive platforms may be important for the development of innovation and so on and so forth, but it's not the obvious solution to these kind of problems. Huh? In principle, in principle, if we could actually uh, inform, no, guarantee that uh, innovation, the innovation that markets generates could be actually introduced uh, publicly, the best solution here would be a, a single in international public <laughs> platform, okay? That would be the best for everybody, okay? Uh, just to be, okay? To put some more food for thought, okay? So what about the foreclosure and price increase concern? So the story goes here that if incumbent platforms use PPA, then entrants or smaller, no, they, they cannot go in, they cannot enter with a lower price profile because they are forced to keep the price up. Well, what, are we, what if you change name and call it bonus? So a, a new platform can enter with the same high price of the old platform, and then tell their buyer, if you buy from me, you'll get a bonus of 10% of what you buy. And so they give back some of the price, okay? It's not difficult, no? Is it forbidden? No, it's not forbidden. So the PPA are a relationship between the platforms and the supplier. So they don't constrain the action of a new platform. So any platform can come in, stick to the PPA agreement, 
Now get a high price that uh, the incumbent is forcing, and then tell to the, board, to the buyers, well, if you come to my platform, I'll give you back 10% of what you pay as a bonus. So where is the problem? I don't see the problem, okay? So, I don't know. If, if entrants cannot figure out this possible entry strategy, they better don't enter him, because they're probably not smart enough to make a mess in the market, okay? That's, uh, maybe I'm, I'm naive, but you know. uh, Finally, what I think is somewhat less, I mean, I, now I'm talking about a more general perspective. Well, these are cases, specific cases for some markets. So we knew how many hotels, hotels are many, they are dis dispersed, so we think that price transparency on platforms is good. It tends to reduce uh, prices, uh, facilitate comparison, facilitate reputational mechanisms, and so on and so forth. But you know, this is, these are general, uh, there are general papers out there. I saw at least three or four micro theories working on this. And they have a general attitude to look at these PPAs, okay? And they don't look in this paper at possible different business models. And more importantly, they don't look at market structure on the supply side. And that's crucial, because if you think about market transparency, so these platforms are create, creating price transparency. Now, we know that price transparency is a double-edged sword, okay? If you have a very dispersed supply side, they, that probably increases competition, okay? If you have a concentrated supply side, think about editors, and yeah, we know very well from Stigler that price transparency can be very harmful to competition because it would facilitate collusion, independently of whether they do it on purpose or afterwards. And I think this issue you know, of competitive effects of, uh, of, uh, of price transparency is a bit, should be taken into account, at least in the general debate on these PPAs, not in the single cases, because in the cases we know how competitive is the supply side uh, of the market. And then I stop here with the provocation, so... Thanks for being here.